This video is made possible with the help of reliable carriers. They take your Porsche seriously. Welcome back to Eastvale, California. We're here at the Porsche Training Center. Behind me, the talk of the town here in LA, especially after the LA Auto Show release, we have the new Taycan. And uh, just um, for image sakes, just take a look at this caliper. We're gonna talk a little bit about the parts, the components on this vehicle. How much of it is it still your traditional car? What's new when it's become so electrified? And with us today, we have Lucas Kramer, complete vehicle manager of the Taycan line. Thank you for joining us. Uh, you're welcome. All right, so let's just start here. We'll do a walk around 10 piston caliper. This ha probably has more braking power than uh, my, my 996 in this one rotor caliper setup. Uh, it's fast, so it needs to stop. So tell us a little bit about the braking system. Well, first of all, um, it's an electric car, so it has regen braking system. Um, we can actually uh, regenerate up to 265 kilowatts um, with electric motors. So actually you think, okay, why would we need a brake? Well, first of all, when we lap uh, uh, the Nürburgring, for example, or lap, um, uh, lap quickly, um, then we would need um, those big brakes. And also if the battery is full, you cannot regenerate. So that's why you would need um, the big brakes as well. Um, this one is the um, Porsche surface coated brake, um, standard in, in the uh, Taycan Turbo. Um, five, pis five pistons on each side, so 10 piston callip. So quite a big brake. Um, it's surface coated, so you can here see uh, like this shiny uh, surface. So this reduce uh, brake dust um, immensely. Um, but still, yeah, the ca the car is um, is over two tons, so that means uh, you would need um, this big of a brake. And the car has a lot of performance, so that's why we have big brakes um, on this car. So with the Taycan, is it still three levels where you have the standard steel brakes, and you have this one, and then you have the uh, ceramics as well. Exactly. So the Turbo S comes with ceramics, the Turbo comes with PSCB, so surface coat brake, and the 4S has normal uh, steel brakes with uh, then red uh, brake calipers. Now, since we're talking about the brakes, Damon, I don't know if you can come over and see this. Um, I always love the functionality that is built into a Porsche. And when you see a, a hole in the front of the car or a scoop or something like that, there's a reason for it. And if you come over here, take a look at this hallway of a brake duct. Exactly. So um, the car is, air, is very, very aerodynamical. So we, we optimize it in every manner. So here we have a tunnel like funneling um, air through this uh, front of the car towards the brakes. Uh, then next to it, we still have um, conventional radiators. So the car uh, produces less temperature, um, but we still have heat that we have to get out of um, the car, especially out of the battery. And that's why we still have two conventional radiators um, here in front of the car. Now, I know it's a very complex cooling system. When we lift the car in a little bit, we'll take a look at that down below. But let's just go back to the, the side here. I noticed a very special cable, Damon. Hopefully you can see it here. Orange in color. And I think most of us know uh, that's like beware, right? So tell us a little bit about that. Exactly. So where is this coming from? So here um, on top, you have a... Uh the charging uh, plug. Um, so the charging plug on this side is AC charging. So that's why we just have one orange cable. So this orange cable goes into the bottom of the car and there we have our onboard charger. So this is linked. On the other side, we have again a charging plug. We can see that on the other side, but on this side, we will have more cables. Okay, let's take a look at the other side. Perfect. So here you can see it with the camera, you can see three cables. So why three cables? Um, on this side, we can charge AC and DC. So um, AC is the, the small orange cable and on, uh, on the bottom of it, you see two big um, orange cables and those are for uh, the two DC plugs for DC charging. 
And when you pull up to a, 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 a service area to charge your vehicle, you have to choose. You can't stick two, <laughs> two, exactly. two, two adapters in to charge on both sides. Exactly. You have to choose one. So um, one of the charging spots, uh, charging plugs will be blocked once the other one is open. That's just for safety precautions. Um, and normally on highway charging, this would be DC charging. So high powered charging uh, in this car up to 270 kilowatts. So um, that's... Uh, that makes very, very fast charging speeds. Um, and at home, here in the US, you would probably charge with 9.6 kilowatts. That would be AC charging. And then you can think, okay, well, you want to have it on the driver's side or on the passenger side. Got it. All right, so let's talk about suspension since we are got the camera pointed in that direction. So you see the suspension system here. What I noticed was there are not um, camber adjustment points. It's just, I mean, you mount the system in, it's air ride. Uh, no need for camera adjustments now? I mean, the, 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 the new uh, systems and chassis systems are so sophisticated that uh, we don't need much adjustment anymore. And if so, um, this one is an air spring, so it would adjust itself. So that means um, uh, this, uh, this air spring is actually derived from, from the Panamera. We re-engineered it, we kind of like shortened it because the car front is so low. Um, but yeah, you don't need that much of adjustment anymore um, that you would probably know from a 996, for example. Okay, let's go to the back. So what I noticed first looking back here are these, lack of a better term, patches of um, what seems to be sound deadening material. Exactly, exactly. So uh, the electric car, for, for instance, is, is very, very quiet because you don't have a big uh, engine, combustion engine sound. So that's why we did a lot to make the car as quiet as possible because all of a sudden, as you don't have an engine sound anymore or a petrol engine sound, uh, you all of a sudden hear a lot what's going on in the car. So that's why we, we went through a lot of effort in order to make the car as quiet as possible. And that's why we also using uh, these plates. So that makes it much tougher as a manufacturer that you now don't have engine noise to mask maybe some vibrations or creaks and rattles. You really... I mean, you really have to make it quiet. So, so exactly, exactly. That was a very, very big challenge, um, um, like developing the car. Um, we, we, we went through a lot. We put a lot of effort in it. Um, we had some very, very clever engineers working on that. Um, so, so that's why the car is, is just so quiet when you sit inside and so, so damped. It's very, very good. All right, let's go to the rear. All right, so here, peeking out of the bottom, is some sort of canister, maybe it's air? Exactly, so the car um, comes with an adaptive air spring and air suspension. Um, so um, we have a compressor and here we store, the, we store the air for the air suspension. Let's see if we can't get this vehicle up higher and take a look underneath. Okay, Damon, can you see everything all right? All right, so this is the air, air tank for capacity, this is the air pump? Correct. This is, I guess, the valves and such to exactly. direct the air where you need it to go. I know there's a motor somewhere around here and a transmission, so exactly. do you mind pointing that out to me? So, um, so the motor um, is actually um, on top of here. So uh, here, through here, you can see the motor. Here we have the gearbox, and here we have the differential and the Porsche torque vectoring entity. So. Um, Similar to actually a, a normal car, you would have a, a gearbox here and, and uh, the differential. Still, we have the electric motor here and on top of the, of the motor, that's something you can't see here, is the pulse inverter. Now, I've been below a lot of cars and I've got to say, to me, it seems like there's a lot less components. I mean, I see the drive shaft, but yeah. Yeah. I'd say in terms, of, in terms of chassis, you have about like, similar components to a conventional car. Um, yet, of course, uh, in terms of, of the drivetrain itself, much less components. Uh, one big component is, is actually over there. It's actually the biggest component we have in the car, which is the battery. Uh, and you can see the battery bottom. It's a very, very thick steel plate. Uh, for, for safety purposes. Um, and um, one, one thing that comes with it is that we have a fully covered underbody, which is then again um, optimizing the aerodynamics of the car, making it as drag efficient as possible. So, so is this the, is what is it exposed to the element or is there another cover on top of this? Well, um, there's this cover, then we have the cooling of the battery, then we have a crest structure, and within those crest structures, there are the modules. 
Now, in your presentation, you talked about uh, the sort of the routing of the cooling system being below the battery as opposed to within the cells of the battery. Exactly. So um, we cool the battery fr uh, like from the bottom. So bottom cooling, uh, all the cooling channels, and then we have the crest structure, and then we have our modules. So that's uh, very, very safe. Um, and uh, we opted for this because we thought, okay, safety is, is, is very important for us, and we wanted to make this car as safe as possible. So this is a much larger scale, but imagine your toy car and you had to replace the 9-volt battery underneath. I mean, you're looking at maybe a dozen or so of these large bolts that kind of keeps the, the main battery in. Does it literally just drop out? So, first of all, the battery is an integral part of the body of the car, so it gives us additional stiffness. So that means we have um, actually way over a dozen oh. uh, screws. But then you would need a, a, specific, a specific lifter, then you take them off, and then you can slowly pull down the battery out of the car. Probably one of the more common questions I get about electric cars, uh, or specifically to learn more about the Taycan, is like down the road, 10 years from now, when you know I, you think in simple terms of like your cell phone and your battery life may may degrade and such. At that point down the road, are you replacing the entire battery? Or are you replacing parts of it that you, the computer will say, you know, this particular cell is bad, replace that? Well, first of all, our battery management system constantly monitors every different cell pair. So that means we have a very good overview of what is happening in our battery. Um, the battery management system then takes care for that we don't uh, overcharge um, the different cells, that they are like nicely balanced. Uh, we take care with our term management system that they are at the comfy temperature. Um, so actually we, we, we don't expect, uh, or we expect our battery to last very, very long. In fact, we give a quite a long uh, guarantee for it, um, a warranty. But uh, still, um, in case something would happen with a certain part of the battery, with a battery management system, we could detect the different cell pair. So that means we don't would have to change the whole battery. We can like take the battery out, we can open it, and then we can find the module and the cell pair that is actually uh, not working properly, so we could either change, of course, the whole battery, but we can also change modules or even um, a small cell. Okay, let's walk to the front. So from underneath, it looks fairly conventional with in terms of the suspension, and uh, there is a motor up here somewhere, and you see uh, the drive line. Um, tell us what else is up here. Yeah, so of course um, you see a lot of covering here, coverings here. So um, we have um, underneath here, we have um, the electric motor. We have uh, our one speed gearbox in the front. Um, of course, we have the steering. Um, but as well, we have all the cooling. So um, the cooling uh, liquids are actually distributed um, somewhere around here. So that's why you can see here um, a, lot of the, a lot of the cooling valves, um, a lot of the pumps. Um, and that's actually where we kind of distribute the whole cooling into, into the car. That's also done here. Um, why is a lot of cooling also here? Because here we have the charging entities. We have the onboard charger. We have the DC-DC uh, changer. We have the uh, high voltage booster. So that's why here we all again need some cooling and that's why we kind of like distribute everything uh, everything here and right here we're looking at the water pump exactly pumps okay so in a traditional combustion engine you're used to seeing the water pump tied to a belt or tied to the side of the electric motor. It, it, this is an electric motor and this maze here that we're looking at the computers know where to send hot or cold coolant based on your needs very interesting. All right, let's see if we can move out and take a little bit. I know this car has the interior removed out of it, which is I don't think anyone has seen before, so let's take a look at that. So the Tycons are getting ready to be delivered at dealers, and in order for it to be that way, all the technicians and all the dealerships need to learn every inter integral part of the Tycon, and so that means interior, exterior, take everything out, know how to put it back together. But this gives us an opportunity to see what's underneath all the carpets. So anything you want to point out? Yes, for example, um, here you can see cutout parts of the battery. So uh, normally you would expect the, on the body uh, at this point being just flat because there's a big battery underneath it. Here you can see cutout parts out of the battery. Um, and then behind you can see kind of like a 
kind of like a bulb. Um, so um, that's why we came up with a very clever idea of um, changing the battery so that the people in the second row can sit very comfortably. So that's why we have those cutout parts of the battery uh, called foot garage. And here you can lower your feet into and sit very, very comfortable. However, of course, therefore we have to kind of spend uh, battery modules. And those battery modules are then here in a second floor. That's what you can see um, over here. Um, that's our battery modu vo uh, modules. And actually here, you notice there's a tunnel. That's an additional module that we just flipped um, by uh, 90 degrees. So when you displace the batteries, which you would could easily do, just make it straight across, but you gave it a foot garage for comf comfort, and now those batteries or those cells would have to be moved somewhere. Correct. And so you're utilizing the space under your knee, and I was very surprised to see that this car still has a ton, a traditional tunnel. Yeah. So on the back seat, you have this tunnel. On the front seats, however, you wouldn't have this tunnel. But here we have our battery management system that's on top of the battery. Um, this is this upward sloping kind of tunnel. Well, Lucas, thank you so much for the tour of the Taycan. We're so excited to see what's next in terms of performance, electrification of our favorite brand. And thank you for coming to Tech Tactics. Hope you guys enjoyed the tour. More next time.